Good evening, everybody. It's Monday, September 30th, 2013. Monday Night Raw has just gone off the air. And what I think was a pretty good show. Seems like we got a little bit of conflicting opinions going on around here. Saw some cool things go down with the big show. Paul Heyman and Ryback had a bit of an awkward moment. We saw the debut of Lost Matadores, and it was the go-home show to this Sunday's WWE Battleground pay-per-view. So there's certainly a bit to talk about here. Got a nice little set of hosts we got here. First off, let me introduce myself. I am Mike Payton, lead host of Keeping Kayfabe, amongst many other projects I get myself busy with. Also with me tonight, we have Mr. Steven Wago, lead host of Unanimous Dishes and MMA, over on Dream Elite Radio, as well as Otaku Nation here on Mega Powers Radio. Steven, how you doing this evening, dude? Um, I'm all right. I'm pretty chill for the most part. Well, chill's good. You know, better than raging. Yeah. It's not like that night where Daniel Bryan lost the title where everyone was going crazy. Yeah, I mean, that was... Uh, well, I, I did, see, I was okay with that moment, but it was some of the layouts afterwards, which I didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> and also with us, we got Mr. Paul Hibbard. Paul, what's shaking, dude? Where has the DJ business been treating you? It's going great. I got gigs coming up October 17th and the 24th. Come on out. I'll let you guys know. I'll update you on the locations as they come out. He plays all of John Cena's favorite hits. Oh, I certainly do. (laughs) I have his whole album, his whole one album on catalog. Oh, no, wait. I'm sorry. He came out with two. Do you have the Rocks rap music, too? (laughs) No. do, Do you at least play Randy Savage rap album? Oh my! No, but I'll tell you what I do play. I do play Sammy Davis Jr.'s version of the Shaft theme song. <laughs> oh my goodness, crazy! You got it's real. It's real. You got to listen to it. All right, well, we're also going to have Tony Mango joining us in just a moment. He's on a little bit of a tape delay watching Raw, so he'll be joining us via satellite in a little bit. Well, we'll get him in here a little bit later. So while we begin our conversation, um, oh. Oh, look who we got on the line here. Let's bring this guy out first. Our good old favorite caller, Mr. J.D. from Pittsburgh. We always know you get here good and early. J.D., what's shaking, dude? What's going on, guys? How you doing tonight? Absolutely tremendous, man. How you, how you doing? What do you think of tonight? I, 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 we have a little bit of a conflicting opinion here. Maybe you can settle the score. Well, I'll maybe settle the score indeed. And you know what, though? With Raw coming in next Monday, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens the night after Battleground. Um, Tonight, though, I mean, being in Biloxi, there were some good parts about the show, and there were some mixed reviews of the show. I'm going to say it was a mixed bag tonight. I don't think they did enough to sell the show. It's going to be interesting to see what happens, obviously, going into this uh, Friday night with SmackDown being taped tomorrow night in Baton Rouge. I mean, the good points of the show, if you want to talk about the good points of the show, I mean, it started out real well with the whole Punk Langston thing. I thought that was interesting, mind you. Then, of course, you had uh, some of the weird uh, bullshit, if you want to call it not weird bullshit, but just absolutely crap. I mean, the whole Los Matadores, I mean, I'm sorry. That was absolutely a fucking nightmare. It was a fucking preach, joke. Preach, J.D., whatever. preach. I mean, it, I will. I mean, I mean, the guy who was dressed up in the horns, it looked like Cornswoggle's twin. That's how bad it was. Then you have this whole thing with the McMahons in the ring and the Rose family. It was good, but once again, it goes to show you that Stephanie Big Mouth McMahon loves to run her yap whenever she can and embarrass the Rose family. But once again, it just shows that Triple H loves kissing his father-in-law's ass whenever he can because he can do it, and it's his power, mind you, needless to say. But hopefully he'll find out this Sunday, however, that his old bitch boys, the Shield, who have been kissing their asses more often than not, will be having their tag titles taken away from him. But of course I don't see that happening because obviously once again, the Shield is loving to kiss the McMahon's ass any chance they get. Uh, the other thing that was pretty bad about the whole show, the R-Truth Curtis Axel thing, lame match there, Horrid. just dumb. I mean, that was a joke. I mean, I, I mean, the other thing that was absolutely pathetic, the Paul Heyman thing with Ryback and the proposal, <laughs> you were really? T- <laughs> you were I mean, t- come on. That, 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 just was was, absolutely... that, 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 that spelled a broke back mountain. Is what Ryback. It okay. like. J- yeah, no, JD, you have to give the king credit. He came up with a pretty good joke with Ryback Mountain. That was, that was. I did of... hear about that, and I did laugh. Yes, I did laugh at that. Then I you have the whole totally. Bell. Then, then you have Del Rio versus Zack Ryder. It was like a superstar special. I mean, you want to talk about bad though? I mean, this is just so pathetic. Where do we continue? Oh, that's right. Before we go to continue, I want to give you guys a little bit of spoiler alert here. I did see earlier tonight, however, the two warm-up matches for tonight were Rob Van Dam versus Kurt Hawkins. Kurt Hawkins is still in the company? What the hell's up with that bullshit? 
Anyway, Van Dam won. And then your main event this week on Superstars, we're going to call it main event, Damian Sando. Let's show how far he's gone down the ladder. And he takes on Justin Gabriel and he feeds him. But you talk about Sandow, man. I mean, what about him and freaking Dolph Ziggler? I mean, is Dolph Ziggler in some serious trouble at the office that he has to be the pre-show warm-up guy? I mean, what the hell is up with that bullshit? If you ask and it's not me. even it's not even for a title. No, like, and that's it would be bullshit, inter- but it would be interesting if it was like Edge versus Ken Anderson for the briefcase. That would be yeah. great. Yeah, but you're not going to see that crap, and that's bullshit. But before we continue on with our raw report, I think we all got to say congratulations. Definitely is in order for Trish Stratus, definitely, and also Brie Bell. I mean, Trish especially becoming a new mom today. I think we're all very happy to hear the news about that, and much love from her fans like me, and I think everyone else out there is definitely to say congrats to her. No question about it. Uh, the Brie Bell engagement, very nice to see. But the end of the night, however, I mean, the only match that was really good tonight, if you want to call it good, was the six-person tag with Dolphin the Usos against the Shield. But once again, it goes to show you that the Shield loves to kiss Vince's ass when they can and pull off a cheap victory, and they got one here tonight. But then you have the whole Big Show Stephanie backstage vignette. I mean, I am tired of seeing week after week Stephanie continue to belittle the Big Show. Why doesn't she grow a set of cojones and try to take a learn how to deal with the Big Show's anger. I mean, basically, what happens? Oh, Triple H punished the Big Show this week because he's going to put him in a match against the Shield. What's Triple H afraid to get in the ring again? Oh, that's right, he is. And he has his old wife defending him and his father-in-law basically defending him because he can't get in the ring no more. And he's kissing their asses. What a shame. Why don't you get back in the ring, Hunter, and take a punch? Oh, that's right, you're not going to because you're not a man. Then, of course, you have the whole Antonio Cesaro thing with Santino. Mm. This was a joke. And then the last little bit of the show, the whole debate between Daniel Bryan and Orton, it started out great. It started out not that bad. But then once Brie Bella came down and defended Daniel Bryan, however, I mean, I was glad to see her defend that. But it goes to show you, once again, Daniel uh, Randy Orton is like the Shield, loving to kiss the McMahon's ass as well. And, of course, he couldn't be stopped because he has Triple H and Stephanie basically – defending him and helping him out. Basically, they're encouraging to do that, and they don't do anything except to screw Daniel Bryan. Well, let's see what happens on Sunday night in Buffalo when Daniel Bryan wins the championship. But wait a minute. That might not happen, because once again, we're going to see probably, obviously, the McMahons continue to be on their little power-hungry trip. So, all in all, thumbs way down tonight, if you ask me. This was absolutely a dreadful show. <laughs> yeah. I I love you, JD. I fucking love you. My gosh, that was a lot to get out there, JD. Now, JD, oh. I don't I don't want to cut you off too quick. We got another call on the line here, though. I want to make sure we get them on here. Uh, so, call, please be patient. We just want to ask JD one final thing here. JD, your low point and your high point in tonight's Raw. The high point, I think, was the six-person tag. Even though the Shield won, it was a good match. The low point, I would have to say, was the road segment and also the backstage thing with Stephanie and Vin, uh, Big Show. And one last point, if I could get in real quick, Keller, sure. guys. I, I just want to wish my baseball team they are going to be playing that one-game playoff tomorrow night. It's, going to be, it's already nuts here in Pittsburgh for the Pirates-Reds game tomorrow night. It's going to be fun. Let's hope the Pirates, after 20-plus years, get to the playoffs. And even if they don't, it's been a great season. But right now... All the talk here in Pittsburgh is Pirates baseball for the big playoff game tomorrow night. I hope they fucking destroy the Reds. I hate mm. Cincinnati. Thank mm-hmm. you. At least someone's backing me up. I love it. Thank you. At least that, someone's backing a, me up tonight. I'm a Brewers fan, so Cincinnati can go fuck themselves. Go Pirates. Yes. Amen to that. Oh, my goodness. Right, we're seeing a lot of hate for this show in the chat room. But, uh, <laughs> J.D., thanks for calling me. We always appreciate getting your opinion on the show, dude. Thanks, guys. Talk to you next Monday. Actually, I'm, I'm going to be at the Raw next Monday, but I will be watching, though. Oh, congratulations, man. Hope you have a kick-ass show there. Thanks, guys. All right. Good night, dude. All right. We're going to bring on our next caller. We got a caller from the 304 area code. Caller from 304. Tell us, Steve, where you're calling from. Fastball from west to west Virginia. Hey, what's on your mind tonight? What would you think of tonight's Monday Night Raw? Uh, I didn't like how Randy Orton and uh, – uh, Vince McMahon, uh, what's his name, Triple H, and Stephanie's doing about the Shield. I don't like how they're doing about Big Show and talking about his family. I think it's wrong. And I think Daniel Bryan should have kept the belt. And when's okay. John Cena coming back? Well, John Cena's pretty hurt pretty bad right now. Um, I, we're predicting the soonest we might see John Cena back is maybe Royal Rumble. 
Uh, I think we'll have him back in time for WrestleMania, but I wouldn't plan on seeing him through the remainder of this year other than in those excellent commercials for his new app for the iOS where you can play race cars. Yeah, he had some pretty ser- serious surgery, so he's uh, taking the time to recover. He's rushed it in the past, so he's taking all the time he needs. You think he's going to do another Royal Rumble surprise appearance like he did last time? Yeah, but I don't I think, think he'll win. No? Oh, yeah, he will. So it was, you're, you're apparently a big John Cena fan, but while John Cena's absent, who are you really looking at to, to find your, your entertainment and who to back? Daniel Bryan, all the way. All right, so you're, you're definitely rooting for him this Sunday at Battleground. Yes. Hmm. Who, who else are you looking at to back up right now? Anyone um, Anyone going for, like, Big Show? Cody oh, you're, you're behind yeah. Big Show. Yeah, and Cody Rhodes and his dad and his brother Gold Dust. Where do you see Big Show going? Do you think he's finally going to hit that breaking point where he's not going to care about the – about the job yeah, and having to deal with all that, or do you think he's eventually just going to keep following, pulling the line, and being a company man? No, he, he's going he's gonna to snap. Be- Beth, can I ask you a question? Yes. Who do you think he's going to knock out first, Stephanie or Triple H? I don't think it's going to be Stephanie. Oh, I like her. I like her. Yeah, me and uh, Paula being screaming for a big show to knock Stephanie on her ass. <laughs> yes, it needs to happen. She keeps downgrading family. Why do that? He's trying to support him. So what do you think about the uh, the Shield versus Cody Rhodes and his brother Goldust to get them both jobs potentially? I mean, you say you're a Cody Rhodes fan. Are you a Goldust fan? Did you watch Goldust previous years? Are you excited yeah. to see him potentially be back? Yes, I am. We grew up and watched him in Lewis County. Hmm. Go Lewis County. That's right. <laughs> All right, Beth, let me ask you, what was your favorite point tonight overall, the highest point, and what was the most boring point for you, the lowest point? The boring point, uh, I don't know. What do you think, Ray? The boring point. I think it was Triple H and Stephanie coming out there running her mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they need to shut up for a while. Oh, what about the high point? What, what, what you got you most excited tonight? I liked it what uh, Daniel Bryan did, but it's a shame Daniel Bryan didn't beat Randy Orton. Well, he, he yeah, has beaten take- Randy Orton. No, I think she means it's a shame that our Randy Orton put him through a table tonight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah the the beatdown. Yes, that was sad. But well, yeah, I wish Daniel would have beat him. Do you think these guys look good in pink? <laughs> do what? Do you think the, do you think these guys look good in pink? Do you prefer it? Yes, for breast cancer. Yes, I lost my grandma and my husband lost his mother. And oh, I lost I'm sorry friend. to hear that. Yeah, they, they, they really, really went all out. They, yeah, they went all out. Yeah, yeah between the pink rope line. and all the attire. Yeah, well, they yeah, don't. If you go to this WWE shop, they have a whole gallery. Pretty much every single shirt that they have active right now got a pink version of it. There's AJ, the pink, yes, yes, yes. There's the pink AJ Lee. There's the pink yeah. Dolph Ziggler. There's the pink Santino shirt. There's even a pink Zack Ryder shirt. Del Rio, yeah, exactly. all the heels. What did you say? Oh, no, I was saying all the heels even have, uh, I mean, Randy Orton came out wearing his Rise Above Cancer shirt tonight. I mean, no, they okay. He is. <laughs> as long as we support him, that's all matters. Is the right. pink um, Z- Dolph, not, not Dolph, not Ziggler, the pink Zack Ryder shirt to go along with his future pink slip? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Goodness. All right, Beth, anything else on your mind tonight? No, nope, that's all. All right, Beth, we appreciate you calling in. Have a good night. Definitely join us sometime another week. Thank you. Take care, Beth. All right, we appreciate our callers that we've already had on the show. If you are listening and you would like to join us live here on the Monday Night Raw post show on Mega Powers Radio, you could do so by dialing area code 760-512-7247. That's area code 760-512-7247. You can also join us via Skype if you go to the broadcast page. Hit the little Skype icon. It'll launch your Skype app, and you can join us without having to worry about any long-distance charges if you don't have free long-distance on your phone. All right, if you heard a little voice we had there in the end, we got joined by Mr. Anthony Mango, lead host over on Smart Out Moments Smack Talk Show. Tony, welcome to the show, man. Hey, hey. I understand you were on a little, bit, a little bit of a tape delay. Were you just late getting it home to watch Raw? Uh, a little bit, and How I Met Your Mother. 
What did you Very say about nice. my mother? <laughs> you don't want to. You don't want me to repeat it. Yeah, I was just, I was in the same boat with the whole uh, delay. I came in late from shopping and I had to fast forwards. But luckily, there's that many commercials that I caught up quick. Shopping. Exactly. Yeah, you I got what? I got dragged to the mall by the wife. Don't remind me. I was way too tempted to play GTA Five instead of watch this show. You, you yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm gonna do a shameless plug right now. I'm sorry, Peyton. Go buy it. Join the revolution. It's one of the best games I've ever played. We need to hook up and be in the same crew. The online's on tomorrow. Bam. Oh, I, I smell a, a posse being built here. <laughs> so, as I was saying, we, we seem to have like a very different sound opinion. I actually thought it wasn't too bad of a show tonight. It wasn't like five stars or anything, but I would say it was above average. Let me just go ahead and get your guys' overall thoughts on it. And Steven, why don't you start off? Because I know you... you You're wrong. On the other side, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you really feel. <laughs> You're really, really wrong. It was just boring throughout. It was just a really mess show. I, you know, just because they don't do something necessarily wrong doesn't make it a good show. It just makes it a very stale, boring show. There was not one segment that stood out tonight in my eyes. It was either really silly or just meh. There was nothing that interested me whatsoever. And I'm sure we'll get into the crap of The Last Matadores and <laughs> what segment with CM Punk and Heyman and Ryback, what I thought was fucking retarded. And I think the only good thing tonight was... Randy Orton RKOing frickin' uh, Daniel Bryan for the table, and then the Bella ruined it with her shit acting. So, yeah, pretty crappy show. Oh, goodness. Paul, what are your thoughts about the show tonight, man? I, I'm in agreement with uh, you, Peyton. I thought it was a pretty good show, not match-wise, but as far as story progression. I thought the way they progressed with the Rhodes family versus the McMahon family was really good. They set up a big match for Battleground. Huge match because... I mean, I, I I know we all know it's fake, but I mean, kicking Dusty Rhodes out of the uh, training center where he trains all those young athletes, pretty big deal. Um, the whole Daniel Bryan Randy Orton thing, I mean, we've seen Randy Orton do this three weeks in a row. It wasn't a surprise. Uh, the matches weren't that great. I'll agree with uh, uh, JD that the only good match was the six man tag team match. Uh, could JBL make it any more obvious that Los Matadores are Primo and Epico? He, he said it during the match. Don't these guys look familiar? <laughs> and Rosa Mendez looks shorter and hairier. So, I mean, <laughs> and it, it, they kind of covered it up, but not really that well. Uh, I, I, I thought it was a good show. It was entertaining. It went by fast. And when it goes by pretty fast, I, I, I usually think it's, you know, a fairly a fairly good show. That whole, I I was waiting for Big Show to knock one of those fucking cops out or the detective or Stephanie. Oh God, I was just I was on my the edge of my seat, just going knock someone out, knock have, someone out. Have you guys seen all the memes of Big Show's face from that fucking segment? Oh, it's been fantastic. <laughs> it's awesome. It's like the show the sh before the show even ended, they just started like getting fucking the nerd, the grumpy cat and. Uh, one comparing it to Uncle Phil from fucking yeah. Prince of Bel Air. I gotta, awesome. I gotta see those. I haven't seen any of those. I was watching the show. Oh my god, Tony, what, what did you think of tonight's show? You're the, you're the most freshest one here. As a go home show for a pay per view, it sucked. If it was a normal episode, it would be okay. This what didn't make me want to buy Battleground at all. Um, it's the biggest whole thing going into this was a face-off between Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan, and it ended with the two of them just attacking each other after saying some pretty baseline standard stuff. And then the World Heavyweight Championship scene is really just Rob Van Dam doing the RBD thing and Del Rio having a random match with Zack Ryder. Uh, that's it. I mean, that that's not going to make me buy a pay-per-view. But if this would have been last week, that would have been fine. Hmm. Yeah, you know, that's something that, that really overall I have not been made to want to purchase this pay-per-view these last few weeks. No. The, the whole build-up to this has been absolutely unenthusiastic. I had no I idea a pay-per-view was coming up. They've done a piss-poor job of promoting this. And <laughs> did, didn't we just have a pay-per-view? I think it was at it. Shit. <laughs> yeah, that was three weeks ago, man. Not wow. even two weeks ago. So Yeah, that's bad. They shouldn't put them together that. 
they've wow. had some pretty good graphics for the pay per view. Like they haven't promoted it, but when they have shown the matches for it, it's kind of like um, Batman: Arkham Origins is coming out. It's kind of like they have like a a, a a rap sheet, a digital rap sheet on the wrestlers. Like born in so and so, weighs so and so, skills, weaknesses. You know, like like a digital thing by them. I'm they just glad. Look, I'm just glad it, we don't have a gimmick pay per view for once. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not too far down the line. We do got Hell in the Cell in the very exact same month. Oh, but hey, we got another. We got another caller in the line. Let's bring him on here. We got a caller from 304. Caller from 304. What's your name and where are you calling from? Oh, we lost caller from 304. Call 304. Apologize if you have technical difficulties or you just hung up. But if you're listening, feel free to call back in. We'll get you back in on here. All right, guys. So let's talk about the last segment we saw as Raw went off the air, which was Jerry Lawler starting in the ring, introduces Randy Orton, Daniel Bryan for a face-to-face. Didn't last as a very face-to-face for very long. Uh, got to the point where Randy Orton started calling out Brie Bella, saying what must be wrong with her to want to marry Daniel Bryan. And I believe he said something about laying with barnyard animals. <laughs> huh. He's getting that pay-per-view money now. Yeah, well. You're, you're going back to Ryback Mountain. You're laying with animals. I mean, <laughs> Well, this caused Daniel Bryan to start laying blows on Randy Orton. However, Orton was able to get the upper hand, and before it was all said and done, we saw Randy Orton RKOing Daniel Bryan through a table before he went off the air. And as Wago had pointed out before, Brie Bella came out. She tried to defend Daniel Bryan, I guess. If by defend, you mean just stand there crying as he happened. She almost like stone-faced it like the Mrs. Dad. It was fucking terrible. (laughs) (laughs) It was still better than their reaction to AJ Lee's promo. Oh, sick burn. <laughs> but, uh, I, I guess um, they're trying to continue this whole thing where Randy Orton has found his vicious side again. Um, how do you guys feel about how this is making their match team for Battleground? Tony, why don't you start us off? It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> this has no effect right whatsoever on the whole feud. I do like how they're bringing B, uh, Brie Bella into this because I like when they just kind of acknowledge that – like Natalia is not fucking Kali on the side and that she's actually married to Tyson Kidd and <laughs> that Brie Bella is engaged to Daniel Bryan instead of, I don't know, involving her with fucking El Torito or whatever the fuck they're going to do down the line from now. But it's not going to make me think that Randy Orton's any more vicious or whatever. Now, if he they have a little segment where they have JoJo come out and he gives her a punt to the head and just goes, you know, I'm I'm done with you. I've used you up already. That that'll work. Wow. This so uh, not not a big deal. You you are one of those people who's really pining for the attitude era to come back, aren't you? No, not really. I just kind of think it'd be fun to see JoJo get punted. <laughs> you just want to see the girl who looks like she's a 15 year old preteen. I guess 15 year old would be preteen, pre prom type girl. And Look, she got her heart broken her. by that kid that she knows on the show, and then Justin Gabriel kind of shunned her. So why not make it a hat trick, and Randy Orton can put her out the past year for a while, and she can take a little time off. And what better way to make her take a time off than to do the punt? I love you, Tony. Uh, <laughs> I love you, Tony. Tony Paul, Mango for WWE Creative. Paul, yeah. Take it. <laughs> Paul, take, take over. How is this this whole scene figured your – you got me all tongue tied because <laughs> how how is this whole ending to Raw made you feel about the upcoming match between Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan? Okay, first of all, if you're gonna agree to marry the guy, don't back off when someone is about to beat down on him. Okay, grow some balls and defend your man. All right, I don't care if Randy Orton punts you in the head; you protect him at all costs. You agreed to marry this man. Whatever, I don't care what goes on. Randy Orton is about to destroy him. You protect him. God damn it. This is why I'm for violence against women, because they don't back up anything that they say. Okay. Uh, okay. No, 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 okay. All right, all right. I'm going off. I'm going off that topic. Anyway, we're done. We're done. We're done. Okay. <laughs> well, we, we all knew. We all learned a lot about you guys tonight. We all knew this beatdown was coming. It had to come tonight before Battleground. It's going to come tonight. Because uh, Daniel Bryan is going to get the best of Randy Orton at Battleground again. And then the McMahons are going to come in and take the title away from him again. The only thing I don't like is where is the bedpan to the head? 
Where is the retaliation? At least during the Attitude Era with the corporation, Stone Cold got his licks in. Nobody's getting their licks in. It's like they have, uh, it's like Stephanie McMahon is grabbing everybody's balls and saying, if you cross the line, I'm going to castrate you. Because she's a castrating witch. Let's face it. She castrated Triple H, and she's castrating everybody in the locker room right now. But, I, you know, we, we all saw this coming. We all saw this beatdown coming before Battleground. Uh, wasn't very interesting. Yeah, he RKO'd, he RKO'd him through the announce table, and we were all stunned and whatever, business as usual. Uh, Tony, I want to uh, inform you of one of the posts we had in the chat room here that I thought you might appreciate if I can... Get the chat to stay. What is with this? Oh, my goodness. Uh, awesome piano, man. Mango, new WWE hire, said his stuff doesn't get taken down. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> and, Stephen, has this made you have any interest in this match going into Battleground, or has it waned it? Hang on. Let me just – no, no, I can't find any shits to give. Uh... <laughs> is that is that in this month or just tonight? Uh, I suppose the overall rivalry, because it's been going for a while, there's some interest there. But has this go-home show sold me on the pay-per-view? No. Will I stream it illegally? Probably. So <laughs> That's my man. That's my man right there. So they're not going to get any money from me, but sure, I'll watch their product. Um, You're a broadcast journalist. You have to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, but fucking uh, Corey Truss saying it hasn't even sold me on stealing the pay-per-view. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that, guys, we, we got a caller from 304 calling back in. Let's try to get him back in on here. Oh, we lost him again. Oh, caller from 304, we apologize. We seem to be just be missing you every single time. Uh, with that, I guess we've already talked enough about this ending. So make it really plain. I'm, I'm really underwhelmed considering this is the go-home show, and we only had this one short little segment with... Really, only that one little B-Town, nothing else to it. Kind of, kind of disappointing, I think. Yeah, and for what they did with it, it was fucking weak, everything about it. I mean, I think the funniest part of that segment was that Orton hurt his ankle. No, I think the funniest part is with the three of them standing there. Uh, I mean, Lawler, Orton, and Daniel Bryan, I think they were having an ugly t-shirt contest. Lawler won. <laughs> Lawler definitely won. It was like some bad affliction banana combo. I don't know what the fuck that was. He talked about having pink in his T-shirt. I could barely see any pink. He wasn't. He wasn't supporting the cure. Let's face it. Come on. He's supporting. He's supporting something against heart attacks during the show. Whatever. <laughs> All right, guys. So I think uh, the next big thing that we can talk about here. There's a point backstage where we see Curtis Axel dejected because of a loss he had earlier in the night, and we see Paul Heyman trying to re-motivate him. We have Ryback come in from off screen, say, "Yeah, you know, nothing's no big deal. Matter of fact, I'm going to go out there and call out CM Punk right now. And this prompts Paul Heyman to take his admiration he has for Ryback and state, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to propose. Now, we all know where this was probably going, but still, the language they were using, we know what this was suggesting. And we've seen shit like this all the time. We've seen far worse. But the thing that kind of makes me think about this in a really funny way, did you notice who they introduced were sitting in the front row at one point? What was it, Billy and Chuck? No. <laughs> no. It, it, it was um, some breast cancer survivors there as representatives of Susan B. Komen. Yes. And like, yes. I'm thinking these are just some like random older women that were there yeah, as representatives of the company, probably never seen wrestling before in their lives. Oh, God. And they're seeing this whole skit go down, not to mention the whole thing with the big show having a freak out. <laughs> Must have been a weird experience. Yeah. And they never watch pro wrestling again. <laughs> well, just imagine they go and report this later. Like, well, there was a man who was going to propose to this really muscly ogre who had his own name stitched on his vest. And the worst part about this, when we was having the pre-show chat, is I made some statement about a live sex celebration between these two. So <laughs> when they actually came out with this whole proposal thing, I was like, Jesus, I was joking. 
<laughs> well, eventually we would get to that segment. Paul Heyman would go through this whole spiel saying, no one in my life has ever made me feel like this. He gets down on one knee, takes Ryback's hand, and he officially proposes to him. He proposes to him to be a Paul Heyman guy. You make an honest man of him. However, before Ryback can give his answer, CM Punk's music hits. They prepare themselves. However, he doesn't seem to be in sight until he finally starts running through the crowd, leaps over the barricade, and I was convinced that he had twisted his ankle or uh, Mark, see like Steven that. No, Steven, he put on a good show. See, yeah. I'm not the only one. Yeah, they're all marks. <laughs> Listen, with Punk's performance and the way Heyman even looked concerned and he was holding Rack right back and there was this real awkwardness to it. Even the announcers just kinda like seemed like they didn't know what to do and you know, maybe like Punk was trying to fight it. It it was a very convincing act. By the time he had crawled near the ring and he was calling the doctor over, I was like, okay, he's he's a clever girl. But from from the first moment, I, I was fooled. Yeah, people in the chat are saying they're fooled too. I wasn't alone. If they don't throw the X up, it's a work. Even when they do throw it up, yeah. sometimes it's a work. And plus, uh, you could uh, see Jerry um, JBL in the background taking instructions from his uh, mic. <laughs> Just telling him to shut the fuck up, basically. I didn't fall for it, but I thought that it was done really well. Yeah, I, I mean, it... Like, until he went by the ring, like Peyton said, like, we could clearly see him reaching under the ring for something. I I, I was completely fooled. I, I I was legitimately concerned. I thought he had hurt his knee, overextended. He, he, he teased it too much for me to buy into it. I could just tell it was going to be a work from the get-go. And I think if he had legitimately got injured, it would have gone down a lot differently from that. So, yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't. I didn't see him jumping over the barricade. I had just flipped the channel back. Like I saw him running through the crowd. I flipped the channel and then I flipped back and I saw him grabbing his knee. And I'm like, wait a minute, CM Punk doesn't usually do this kind of thing. Because yeah, I mean, as far as we've seen him in the business before, he hasn't really, you know, done this kind of oh. I'm trying to find the words, but it, it was very it was very good acting. It was very and, good. And CM Punk is the kind of guy where if he did just get something where he just tweaked his knee a little bit, he would continue trying to fight. Yeah, yeah. yeah I guess. But I, I just didn't buy into it. I could just sense work as soon as it happened. Right. Oh well. Fair you, enough. You already said you were in a bad mood tonight, so you're not you're not going to give CM Punk credit here. I understand. <laughs> no, fuck Punk. <laughs> That could have been that couldn't have been me. That could have been me if it wasn't for my bum knee. Oh, so you actually did hurt your knee, see? <laughs> I, now, now I understand. It all becomes clear. Punk, Punk was mocking you with a fake knee injury. <laughs> all right, so we got a caller on the line. We're going to bring him on here. We got a caller from nine five four. Caller, tell us your name and where you're calling from. Hey, this is Corey. I'm calling from California at the moment. Corey, this is Corey Kraus. Yes. Oh, we got Corey Kraus in the chat room here on the show, folks. Corey, welcome to the Monday Night Raw post show, dude. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. We appreciate you calling in, man. What did you think of Raw tonight? Uh, I'm in the camp of uh, incredibly disappointed. Oh, <laughs> oh no. What dragged you down? <laughs> uh, several things. <laughs> um, well, we were just talking about the, the Ryback Punk uh, Heyman segment. What did you think about that? The... Uh, yeah, the right back segment. I was I was kind of entertained by the whole him getting down onto his knee. It was completely awkward, um, but I thought that was kind of in a good way. Uh, I'm not a fan of right back, never have been, um, but I was kind of entertained by that. I loved the CM Punk fake injury. I was I was I bought it completely. Bought it. Um, his promo in the beginning part of the show I thought was kind of forgettable kind of like his one from the week prior. Just kind of sounds like John Cena out there, and unfortunately that's not a good thing. Mm-hmm. A um, couple of things that dragged it down for me, for starters. Uh, I cannot stand it when they pull the you'll never work for the WWE again clause. <laughs> it makes it really obvious what way it's going. Yep. Right. You know exactly what the finish is going to be at this point. We know that Cody Rhodes and and Dusty Rose are going to win. Uh, there's no, there's no reason for them to go the other way. Obviously, they're going to win. They're going to get their jobs back. And well, there's no reason to buy the pay-per-view. 
What's that, I Stephen? guess they might. Yeah, they might just do it to be different. They have a habit of going like, well, the fans think we're going to do this. Let's just do it to fuck with them. I think that's the reason why uh, they put the belt on Daniel Bryan at Night of Champions. Hmm. And it is kind of weird just to see Rollins and Reigns streak just ending with Cody and Goldust after everything that's been going in their way. You'd if think they, if you'd think if the Shield lost their titles, they'd lose them all at once. I okay. say put I say put the titles on the line because it would have added more. Um, they are on the line. They are. They are. No, they're not. Oh, they're not. Yeah, it would no, have added more doubt. So. It would have added more doubt to the match if the belts were on the line. Oh, uh, oh, well, then it's definitely a sure thing. I thought they were on the line. That's what actually made me kind of think it wasn't. If they're not in the line, then absolutely they're winning. No, uh, yeah, no, that's no. just dumb booking. <laughs> huh. Well, uh, what what else happened tonight? Oh, what'd you think of Lost Matadores, Corey? <laughs> um, I was, I was <laughs> <laughs> uh, the crowd was shitting all over these people. Uh, they could not possibly care less. Uh, I could not possibly care less. Uh, JBL, you could tell that the crowd could not possibly care less because JBL had to be so over the top ridiculous to try to sell it as being entertaining. Uh, he was he was getting really above and beyond the normal JBL, trying to do the OA chant and get people involved in it, and just no one cared. Yeah, I'm looking forward to shitting all over this. <laughs> Nobody had to do the Olay chant because they had it on on speaker oh my God. They the had entire that, time. That was canned so bad. <laughs> was so obvious. Oh, yeah, it's not like they the were... hotel that's coming out of the speaker. Who was going to say something? They were chanting one thing. They were chanting boring for most of the time. Yeah, I that. noticed that. <laughs> they were. I feel I'm like su- I heard a primo yeah. chant at some point, too. Yeah, I'm surprised they weren't chanting primo and epico. They're not over enough. The people who don't know remember their names. <laughs> um, so Corey, are you are you sold on Battleground? Are you going to plan on watching and or purchasing? I I I probably won't even steal it. Ooh, <laughs> that's bad. That's bad. It's rough. Rough. There's, um, there's no reason for me to watch it. I mean, I. I have a feeling, you know, Daniel Bryan left the lane at the end of the night. That probably means he's going to have another good night. Uh, the, the Rhodes match, you already know the finish of that. Everything else is just filler. There's no, I mean, it, it's going to be a tough pay-per-view for them to do well. Oh, you're, you're, you're not excited about Punk and Ryback? No, no, I'm not. <laughs> is, there, is there even a Divas match yet? Brie Bella versus AJ, duh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Match of the night, come on. <laughs> With Tamina in AJ's corner, that makes it oh, better. Oh, and we, we learned our pre-show match. I believe it's Dolph Ziggler versus Damian Sandow. Just throw uh, it away. Was, is Damian Sandow even been on a show recently? Yeah, he was on... Yeah, uh, he was. Uh, he was on main event and got knocked out by Big Show last Wednesday. Oh, I didn't know people watch that show. <laughs> I don't. I watch the highlights on online. Okay, I'll let you off. Well, they can't call it bathroom break instead of main event. <laughs> <laughs> that would make a pretty good pay per view name. WWE <laughs> bathroom break. All right, we shit over all our matches. That's, uh, that's that's pretty much what they should call battleground. I mean, come on. Corey, let me ask you, man, your high point, and your low point for tonight's Raw. High point, absolutely, was the Shield match. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Roman Reigns. I think he's going to be the first guy to own a uh, world championship. Um, low point, probably the fact that your intercontinental champion lost to a theme song. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Can you you think after years of this, when the fucking theme music goes off, you think to look away and concentrate on the match. How many fucking times has this happened in WWE now? Can can you count? Can anybody count how many times our truth said what's up during the match? There's probably more times than the fans actually popped for anything during it's, that it's, match. It's probably a higher number than our truth can actually count. They popped. They popped pretty good every time he said what's up. They, the only I, thing they had to fucking enjoy in the match. I think it, I don't know. It seemed to me it was an extra girly crowd tonight. It like there are a lot of women in that crowd. Man, you've been saying a lot of sexist statements. No, tonight, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I said that. I said that before the whole Stephanie McMahon thing. Before all that, 
Like, it just seemed like when CM Punk came out at the start of the show, there were a lot of screams for him. And we yeah, know... I think we should just line all the girly fans up and have them punted by Randy Orton. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Are right. sure that move on, move on, move on, move on. Corey, uh, anything else on your mind tonight, man? No, that'll do. It's a pleasure joining you guys. A pleasure having you, man. Thanks for calling. We'll see you still in the chat, right? Yes, sir. All right, Corey. Thanks for calling in, man. We'll see you every time here on the Monday Night Raw show. You've been very consistent. We appreciate you having you here. Thank you. Take care. Take care, dude. All right. Another great caller we had here on Monday Night Raw post show here on Mega Powers Radio. If anyone else listening would like to join us in, we got the phone-in number, area code 760-512-7247. That's area code 760-512-7247 to join us here talking about Monday Night Raw. So I believe we left off talking about uh, the Heyman, Ryback, and Punk segment. As you're saying, Punk was feigning an injury. He ends up pulling the kendo stick out from underneath the ring, attacks, Camp Heyman, I don't know if they've really come up with an official name for them, the Paul Heyman guys, and ends it by getting the go to sleep on Curtis Axel. I believe at some point earlier in the night he had made a speech saying that he will be at peace when he, one, go, puts a go to sleep on Curtis Axel, two, knocks out Ryback, and three, gets his hands on Paul Heyman. So part one of that has been accomplished tonight. He's a third of the way there. I don't know why they don't just call these guys the Heyman Hustle. I mean, shit, he's got something already called the Heyman Hustle. Seems mm-hmm. a little... They don't want to encroach on John Cena's hustle, loyalty, and respect. Fuck Cena. Cena doesn't even hustle anymore. He's a Boy Scout. <laughs> so, I mean, are you guys excited for this match on the show? If if you do end up watching Battleground, do you think this is a match that may have potential to be the biggest match of the night? Or what are your feelings on it? Steven, why don't you go first on that? For Ryback and Punk? Yeah. Uh, it's going to be another one of the fucking classics like all their other ones. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that great match they had at Hell in a Cell and the other great match they had at that one show that I can't remember because it was shit. Seriously, I don't know why you put these guys together. I suppose it's just a matter of they've got nothing else to do. Ryback's an awful worker. He's only He works better as a face where he just squashes some run-of-the-mill heels. I'm putting him in there with Punk. I don't think Punk can get a good match out of him. Especially now that he's not the heel because he can't carry Ryback throughout the match. It's just going to be a very dull match unless it's overbooked. I've got no interest in it whatsoever, and yeah, fuck it. We probably will be overbooked. We're probably going to see Curtis Axel get involved. Hey, maybe we'll even see a short appearance by Brock Lesnar. No, you won't. No, I probably won't. <laughs> we, can, we can dream, though. Yeah, just, just go away, Pin. It's not happening. <laughs> Tony, take over, because apparently I have to go away. <laughs> in general there's really nothing that I'm looking forward to for this pay-per-view because of the fact that it's completely a stall everything that's going to happen at this pay-per-view is just going to continue at Hell in a Cell and at Hell in a Cell everything's just going to end and some of it's going to end in the right way, way where we kind of have like a legitimate closure but a lot of it's just going to flat out end and then Survivor Series is going to come along, and we're going to see new challengers for the titles, and we're going to see the typical five-on-five traditional elimination match where whoever else hasn't started a new feud yet just gets thrown into there. So really, we're looking at a lack of a build for Battleground, and the results from Battleground aren't really going to mean much because they're going to have to carry over really quickly into Hell in a Cell, which is like two weeks later or something. And then Hell in a Cell will just be kind of there to – be a bridging gap again in Toll Survivor Series, and it's not going to be in Toll Survivor Series or maybe even afterward that we're going to see something with some actual uh, density to it. So Ryback and Punk, they could go out there and have a great match, but they're probably not, and they're probably going to have a rematch at Hell in a Cell. So I've got really nothing to look forward to except maybe their Hell in a Cell match if they have that. <laughs> Another one? <laughs> yeah, because the first one was fucking great. I hope not. I hope we see something else, but you never know. The only way that's going to end up any good is if they go to the top of the cell and the panel breaks loose under Ryback. And Paul, how you feel on this feud right now, hot or cold? Um, I'm I'm a little bit uh, warm on the feud because Paul Heyman is involved. And we all know whenever Paul Heyman is involved, things get a little bit more interesting. I mean, we can't deny that. I feel like he was on point tonight. The faces he was making, yes. so pervy, so perfect. From from the past two Raws that we've seen, the Paulrus 
God damn it, King, stop using that line. If you listen to YouTube, listen to us. Stop using the Paul Rust line. It's getting old. But Peyton loves it. Peyton loves it. I don't care. Oh, my God. I, I totally did not expect him to say it tonight. I thought maybe <laughs> because, you know, he's getting old and he had the heart attack, he might forget. But he brought it back. He the Paul Rust line. The Paul Rust line got a fucking chant, for God's sake. God. Anyway, no, okay. I'm not sold on this whole Ryback versus CM Punk, but it will be more interesting now that Paul Heyman is involved on the opposite side of CM Punk because we all know he was still part of the best in the world when CM Punk faced Ryback the first time. Um, You know, I mean, Battleground, it's kind of up in the air. We all thought payback would suck. We all thought payback would suck. But I... You know, it turned out to be a pretty good pay-per-view. Um, I'm going to wait and see what happens on Battleground. I'm certainly not going to pay for it. I don't remember but... what payback was. What pay-per-view was that? That was Ryback versus John Cena in the ambulance match. That was I, I, that was the only match oh, I remember. Oh, yeah, that wasn't actually a bad pay-per-view. You're right. That wasn't a bad pay-per-view. Um, you know, I'm, I mean, it looks... It looks bad in the sunset, but when we actually get to the sunset, it might turn out a little bit different. Um, I'm going to wait and see what happens on the pay-per-view. I, you know, despite whatever happens with the actual matches, Big Show's going to knock somebody out at, at Battleground. He's got to knock somebody out at Battleground. Himself. Otherwise, this whole thing is just going to, you know, I'm just going to be like, okay, I don't care. Whatever. Triple H and Stephanie rule the world. Whatever. I would love to choke her out and him out, but, you know, they can just go do their own thing. Now, let me let me open up this can of worms. Should WWE, would, would this be more exciting, perhaps, if WWE took a page out of TNA's playbook, cut a lot of pay-per-views, and made shows like this one a, a non-pay-per-view show, but something that's still, like, on a special night, and has a little bit of an extra feel than just your regular ordinary raw, like a like a Saturday night, not like a Saturday night's main event, uh, but you know, they can still have special names for them. You know, like they had Tuesday in Texas. They had they a all, format. That, they had a format that worked though. The in your house format. You had your main pay per views, and then you had a few in your house specials. They mm. already they already do that anyway. They have the tribute to the troops. Um, well, that, which, that, that that has no build to it. It's like I'm going to fight you at tribute to the troops. Well, no, but it's still coming up. They have tribute to the troops. They have a lot of specials that they put they on have, live TV. They have the Slammy specials. The Slammy? Well, it, hey, they still have it. They have the Slammies. They have a lot of specials they put on TV that nobody pays for. Yeah, well, back then they used to be special because they were three-hour Raws. Now every Raw is three hours. Yeah. yeah. Old school Raw. Old school uh, Raw. The last one was a dud, though. It was last yeah. week. Kind of stuff. But I mean, it's still a theme. They right? need to like they need to change that up where like they have a different period of Raw. They might have Halloween Havoc. That's something they could definitely do. Yeah, I've been saying before they need to do bring back that seasons beatings uh, idea and have Halloween Havoc and Bash at the Beach and other kind of things like that to go along. I think more so you don't get rid of every pay per view or have only four pay per views or anything like that. I think you just get rid of this October September mix up and instead of having Battleground and Hell in a Cell, you just have one pay per view. Yeah, one pay per view a month. Simple as. And don't but, make it Hell in a Cell. But you know they're always gonna have their SmackDown Thanksgiving special, their SmackDown Christmas special. I mean, they're always gonna have But that. still there's really nothing huge or about those shows. They're no, more no. just shows yeah, that there's no titles, there's no it's, feuds. It's, we're we're just going to put Christmas lights around the nameplates. That's no, what's going to be special. I, I know that, but they're going to count that as their specials. You know you know how the company thinks. They're going to count that as their seasonal specials. You know what I mean? No. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess when they're trying to put that portfolio they present to the network execs, execs yeah, that, that counts, but... Yeah, well, it's that's what I'm. Fans. That's what I'm saying. They're not going to go above and beyond because it's not going to. It's it's not going to make them more money than they're already making. They're already making billions and billions of dollars. Well, let me tell you, I, I've begun watching Triple H's newest DVD, Thy Kingdom Come. Excellent watch. I, I've really enjoyed what I've seen so far. I've only gotten about halfway through the documentary so far. 
Triple H is a very old school guy, and we've already seen him implementing a lot of more old school theories into the, the, his approach to the product. Maybe we could see something like that in the future where we cut down a few of these pay-per-views and maybe do more TV specials. I know he's focused on the tag division, but if it, his, if it was his idea to bring the Los Matadores, go fuck himself. And the tag team division right now is thriving. It's thriving more than any other division, more than the championship divisions. I mean, you, you look at the World Heavyweight Championship division. I mean, yeah, it's boring, and so is the WWE Championship. And what's going on with the IC Championship? Nothing. The U.S. Championship? Nothing. Nothing. Tag team, like, you got the primetime players, you got the Usos, you got the Real Americans, you have 3MB, I mean, you, you got a lot. <laughs> the tag titles and the Divas Championship, you're right, are the hottest titles right now. Right? Right. What, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on? Welcome to the Twilight Zone. <laughs> Imagine a world where <laughs> Brie Bella gets some FaceTime. She gets yeah. a lot of FaceTime. It's just shit we don't want to see. Right. That, that was kind of weird tonight. Um, let, let's start pulling things back into my night right here. So, yeah, why, why don't we just go ahead and start talking about it. They showed this video package uh, about the relationship between Brie Bella and Daniel Bryan, and it was followed up by Brie Bella having – I gotta say, as far as a Monday Night Raw Divas match, a decent length match between her and Alicia Fox, I think with Brie Bella getting the pinfall with the X Factor, what, what what's with the sudden shine on Brie Bella? I mean, they, they started giving her a little bit more back um, back when they were doing the Total Divas thing, but now it's very focused. It's very singleized on on Brie Bella because they, one of the other ones injured. They have to, and her sister's injured, and they have to put the shine on her. Because uh, Total Divas isn't going to come back until November. Well, they're the stars of the show. Yep. And they've proven in the past that they don't really give a shit about Natalia. So who else are they going to do it on? Naomi, which she's not really a focal point. And Cameron is garbage in the ring right now. She still needs to learn a lot. So they need to give it to Brie Bella. Well, we didn't the even see AJ all night. We didn't. And where the fuck is Beth Phoenix? Well, AJ was she got uh, released. AJ was in the background. Oh, she did. The screen with FA next Camino. to be released forever. Oh, I didn't it was forever. It's like maybe eight months ago, something like that. That's forever in wrestling years. Yeah. No, okay. AJ Sorry, was Tony. in the background. Did, did Tony, you guys you see her with uh, Tamina? Oh yeah, she was watching the TV at one point. Yeah. Uh. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, so, what were you guys feeling on this, Tony? We're, we're, how was the Divas match tonight? Was it was it brutal? Was it actually not too bad? How how do you lay on it? It wasn't anything special. It wasn't anything um, positive or negative special. Um, you know, it was just what was what it was. It's not something that I'm going to remember tomorrow in one way or another. It wasn't that horrible Divas Battle Royal that we had before where Gail Kim eliminated herself in like 10 uh. seconds. And it wasn't, you know, the uh, five-star classic type of a match that we never really see anyway. But, you know... Um, it gave Brie Bella something to do, and it made her look a little bit better going into the pay-per-view. She's probably not going to win, so she looked good on this episode, and then she'll lose at Battleground. And then Monday Night Raw will come around, and maybe Natalia will lose to AJ, or maybe she'll be the next person to challenge AJ, or maybe Brie will get another shot or something. I don't know. But You know what? I think I think she's going to win, and this just struck my head. I'll you tell you Bree's why gonna I, think she's I think Brie's going to win the title. So that she's a champion, and Daniel Bryan is not. So then when Randy Orton has the title, he has even more steam to say, hey, you deserve to be with a champion. Haven't they acknowledged that Orton's married? <laughs> not like a long time ago. <laughs> actually, that- yeah, I remember that whole thing. They've actually <laughs> shown her wife on TV before, then they used a different woman for the fucking storyline. Yeah, I remember all that shit. Well, yeah, Orrin's had two different wives on TV. You know, I think now that he's a heel again, he should start pooping in bags again. Oh, they've said he's divorced now, so I suppose it's free game. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, because he's definitely been creeping on Brie Bella lately. Tell her that she's too good for Daniel Bryan. That would, that would, be, perfect. That would be a good storyline. Why good did one. they get divorced? Did he shit in her bag or something? <laughs> Probably cheated on her all the time. I shouldn't say that. That's a terrible thing to say about somebody. But that's just how it is when you got people on the road like that. It's, it's hard to keep a, a marriage going with that. Yeah, the worst papers Bret out Hart, of nowhere. Bret Hart admitted it. 
Mm-hmm. You, know, you, you know, I don't know if anybody else noticed this during the Divas match, but uh, Michael Cole kind of told JBL to uh, shut the fuck up. And what? Call, did you did you not did anybody not hear this? Michael not. Cole Michael Cole went silent for like two minutes. He did. I did hear that. And really? and, and, yeah. and eventually JBL's like, "Come on, Mike." Come on, Mike. You, you got to do and, play by play. Come on. And the king, and the king was even like, "Come on, Michael, come back, please, God." What, wait, what We're, happened? Okay, no, Michael Cole and JBL got in kind of a tiff. Uh huh. And it seemed a little real because Michael Cole went silent for two whole minutes. I oh, could, I know what you're on about. Yeah. And you could see him at the announce table just folding his arms and holding his hand against his mouth, going, <laughs> "Call the action, JBL. Whatever, I'm done." What were they arguing about? I don't remember this. Well, oh, JBL, no, it's like a married couple. yeah, no, it was, it, it was. It, I, I'm pretty sure it was work, but JBL was all like, "I want to be the call the action guy," and Michael Cole was like, "Go ahead, whatever. I'm gonna shut up." And he <laughs> shut up. He and shut it was, up. It was the for, best two minutes of Raw ever. <laughs> no, it no, it wasn't. It was awkward as shit. Shit, I don't mind it if I don't have to listen to Michael Cole. Well, now that he's now that he's a bipartisan guy and he's not the asshole that he used to be, he's not that bad to listen to. He's actually a pretty good play-by-play guy. He knows, um, how, he knows how to do his job, but he doesn't interest me. Awesome piano man reminded me of a sign that I had seen in the audience, and it said mute, and then a greater than sign, and then <laughs> coal. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a, that sign. That was pretty good. But um, J- JBL and Michael Cole have, have actually a very good chemistry with each other. If you ever listen to their podcast, they they mess around with each other all the time, getting in little arguments. That, that's oh. what they do. It's, oh yeah, I'm I'm, I'm sure it was a work, but it, like for two whole minutes on Raw, it was really awkward, really awkward. I was I, like, <laughs> somebody. Somebody call the action. Somebody I, say something. And I'm actually glad you brought that up because it actually was the most into that match I was. I was like, what's going on with the commentary? What are these guys <laughs> doing? <laughs> They're not, completely not talking about the match at all. Not that they ever do when the Divas and, are wrestling. But. And this was the first time I, I heard King shut his mouth. He didn't say anything. The only thing he said during that whole thing was, Cole, please come back. Please come back. You and have, was, to, you have was, to nudge Jerry Lola when he's quiet to make sure he hasn't had a heart attack. Well, oh God! Oh God! Lawsuits coming down. <laughs> but it was it was legitimately concerning. I, I I it was like Punk hurting his knee. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? This doesn't seem right. Well, that's probably the longest we're ever going to talk about a divas match segment. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even talk about the divas. We barely talked. I mean, it's just like the commentators <laughs> <laughs> didn't talk at all. So um, I, I guess the next big thing to talk about here, uh, we had the debut of a brand new tag team tonight, Los Matadores. Oh, for fuck's sake. Their names are Diego and Fernando, and they have a third little buddy in a little bull costume. Uh, I thought their entrance was kind of cool. They had the bull up on the, the bull's face up on the Titan Tron, and they had the smoke billowing out from it, and they had their uh, their red sheets as a matador would, and they had their little midget in a bull costume run through them as the crowd, the crowd, so behind these guys, belted, ole. <laughs> oh, get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they, they had no came match, so they went against Jinder Mahal and Heath Slater. Nothing, I, I gotta say, like, uh, amazing. I mean, I'm not saying I was blown away. They didn't go out there and have a, a 1998 Rob Van Dam match or anything, but they had a couple cool moves. I like their finisher where they both lift them up and do sort of a, a dual Samoan drop type thing. It was neat. I, I'm digging them. I think there's potential. I think the characters do need a little bit of tweaking. I did not like their music. Like, I was hoping they would still have the same music they were using in the promos, but instead they had this, like, almost funky... Somebody call my mama type music. It was <laughs> weird. I don't know where that came from. The only guy that's allowed to use Ole is Sami Zayn. Fuck these guys. Yeah. Um, the was... little little bull guy was really cool. I, like, I was really digging the moves he was doing, bouncing over the ropes and jumping on top. And he was like a, a safer Sin Cara. <laughs> he's, he's, he is definitely, he's definitely more athletic than Hornswoggle. Thank oh, God. Oh, absolutely. Especially yep. if you like, see Hornswoggle tonight, he looked like shit. I wanted to see the I wanted to see the little bull fall though. I have a thing where I just laugh when I see midgets fall over. Oh, I'm, I'm oh. sure we'll be seeing him doing lots of funny spots. That's that's another reason to hope this tag team continues. Can we but just kick it... the ball and get rid of those guys? <laughs> let's, just, it... let's put him with Rob Van Dam. He has pointless managers. 
Anybody else think that their names Diego and Fernando? Like the Fernando seems a little Fandango. bit weird. I get Diego, but I don't know. Maybe, yeah, I was thinking that same song. It was ABBA. Uh, it was ABBA, pretty much. I don't know. Fernando just seems a little bit weird for them to pick, especially since they do have Fandango. Well, and, it's better than the original names we heard. What was it like? Tostada and Tostito? Something like that. <laughs> Tostada. They were, they, I think it was they, Dorito and Tostito. It was food. <laughs> they were just food before then. then That's they what came. they should have done. They should have tied in the Doritos thing, and they could have had they the regular the Doritos taco, right the regular Doritos taco, and then the Cool Ranch Doritos taco, <laughs> and then the little midget could have been the uh, the fiery hot Doritos <laughs> taco. With a hint of lime. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine the fucking lime on the horn of the fucking mask. <laughs> Could it be any more obvious that these that these guys are Primo and Epico? I mean, pre, I mean. Initially, I heard it was going to be Epico and Hernico, but. Well, for God's sake, JBL just fucking ruined the whole thing. There's what? no mystery anymore. What did he say? He said during the match, "Don't these guys look a little bit familiar?" Oh, for fuck's sake! At least oh, come on. on. You know what that means. Oh, well, you know well, what that means. Yeah, but come on. For people who know, they already know, and they're like, oh, it's a funny little wink-wink by JBL. People who don't know, though, they're not going to know what he's talking about. It's just a, a random JBLism. At least he's um, playing along better than Booker T did with the fake <laughs> Sen Cara, where he's like, I think I could tell this guy apart. He's got a little bit of black under his boots or something. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Chucky Ducky quack quack. quack. That's quack. awful. <laughs> Oh, so Tony, what'd you really think about the team, though? I didn't like it. Ah, I was really hoping that they would come out and it would be this really entertaining, fun, lively kind of thing. The music really killed it. Yeah. That started off really that bad, was... and I thought that their entrance went way too long. <laughs> uh, if they wouldn't have had maybe like the first 30 seconds to it, and they would have started out immediately with the bull thing, which I still think it's a little bit too corny. I mean, I get that it's like kind of trying something fun and different, and I was willing to give it a shot. I'm still willing to give it a little bit more of a shot because I, you know, I had this real hatred gut reaction to Brodus Clay eventually, but I grew to like that character. So maybe I'll grow to like this one. But I was thoroughly disappointed with it. I did like their finisher though. You know what I think they could use? Uh, a few months ago, we did a match over on Keeping Kayfabe. We did what was called the grocery store death match from some random <laughs> fed over in Japan. Throughout the match, randomly a mariachi band would appear and start playing music. <laughs> I think that's what you guys do. You need a mariachi band to play them down to the ring. And like whenever they do their like big spots, the mariachi band can start playing along with them and getting people to chant Ole along with it. Or they could just like to accent their moves when they hit. The, they could just go like da da da. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like they just need to take this gimmick all the way if they're gonna do something this silly. Right. I really feel like they're at that point where it's too silly to be taken seriously, but not silly enough to wholeheartedly enjoy. Yeah. And the worst right. part That's is, it. I think this was meant to be taken seriously. No, there's no way. No, there is. No, 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 there's no way. They got the, the pink way, Aldo Montoya things on their heads. There's no yeah, way this was meant no. to be taken seriously. <laughs> what, if, what if they would have just gone even further and they would have just had like two people like JTG and oh, um, Kurt God. Hawkins play the characters instead? Oh, Why have I got a feeling that this is one of Vince's pet projects? Yeah, it probably is. I'm not going to lie to you on that. Tony, I'll agree with you on um, the entrance was way, way too long. But I will agree with Peyton. I thought some of their moves were pretty interesting. Yeah. And if if, no, if they develop if they develop some new moves and try to expand their move list, they could they could become a fan favorite. Uh I, you know, as much as 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 lame as they are. As lame as they are, and they are very lame. I I, I could see them going either way. And and mind? you know, to give them a little bit of credit, I I can't expect them to get too much of a crowd reaction when you got a a heat magnet in there like Jinder Mahal. <laughs> so, not a surprise they couldn't get any good attention out there. Don't Did hinder the gender. The Did it remind anybody they... else of the Usos? How they had a long entrance that had like quite a bit going along with it. I mean, the, the Usos have the pyro. Whoa, 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 whoa! No, and... no, you're not going to compare the Los Matadores to the Siva Tau. Yeah, the, the, the Uso tag team fucking entrance is awesome. 
No, I'm not yeah. comparing quality. I'm not comparing quality at all because the Usos is far better. But the fact that they had them come out, they did kind of an intricate entrance. They had the smoke instead of the pyro that the Usos have, and then they go into a completely different kind of sounding theme song That's that has it. a little bit of a funky beat to it. I mean, it's the, they go to into a rap song, and these people go into like a funk kind of jungle hybrid. boogie. Los, yeah, Matador, you know. Los Matadores coming to superstars. Soon. It's like they cool took that the template that they did with the Usos and they switched it up a little bit and applied it to them. But I don't know how you can compare their theme songs. I I don't understand. I don't understand. I, I see what he's getting it's, at. It's, it's not the theme songs themselves. It's just well, the, the, the entrances too. It's the, it's the template. They they took the same basic template and just filled in the dots for oh, what shit. they did with Los Matadores. That's what he's saying. Right. So so it's Samoan versus Spanish. Exactly. exactly. Okay. Precisely. Okay. Uh, but Paul, any other thoughts you got on Los Matadores? Um, I thought they had some pretty awesome moves in the ring. I, you know, I recognize a lot of them, but, uh, you know, they have potential. I really didn't like the bull. I really didn't like the bull. Really? You didn't like his moves? No, I thought, I thought it was too much. I thought, like, 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 they built them up to be this honorable Matadores team from España. And, you know, they come out with a little midget in a bull costume. Come on, man. It's like it's like the same thing they did to Brodus Clay. They built him up this whole time as WWE's uh, resident juggernaut that was badass, you know, didn't have any nonsense about him, and then they turn him into the Fungasaurus. I mean, come on. You want to kill it? You want to you wanna kill a gimmick? Then just tell us you're gonna kill a gimmick. Don't don't build it up as this big thing and then just you know shit on it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's how I feel. <laughs> so I was hoping someone else would at least be a little more optimistic about it. But I know Stephen, you're not. But why don't you tell us off here? Okay. Well, let's just fucking get to the entrance first. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> no nonsense. That was the bowl somewhere. <laughs> that was the bowl. That was the bowl. Getting ready to charge you, Steve. I was like, I know. I was like, did so, did, it's like I talked about the entrance and I heard the sound of shit and I was like, damn. <laughs> but fucking hell, they looked so awkward. It seemed like the gimmick had been forced on them. And it was reminded me of when Fandango first debuted. It took him a while to get into that gimmick for it to seem natural with him. And that's the vibe I got from these guys. They seemed awkward from the moment they came down with their little routine on top of the ramp. It looks like they hadn't fucking uh, practiced it very much. They, once they got in the ring, their maneuvers, their timing, it just seemed a bit sloppy. It seemed off. And they didn't seem comfortable with what they was doing. I'm guessing they, got, I'm guessing they didn't put them on many, pre, like, uh, many pre-shows, any dark matches, because these guys just seemed fucking off in the ring. And besides the fact that what their little team uh, maneuvers just seemed kind of lame and kind of run of the mill, it just all didn't seem to fit well. And the midget thing, I think that's going to be the saving grace if these tech team does stay around a bit longer because, shit, it's probably the only thing they've got going for them at this point. After watching Breaking Bad's finale last night and then coming to watch this shit, ugh, what would you have done if Breaking Bad's finale suddenly had Los Matadores pop out? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing fucking Walt dead on the floor and then that little bull running for. No, no, no. The Los Matadores are Los Pollos Hermanos. What? The, uh, the has... fucking chicken joint, goddammit. Los Pollos uh, Hermanos? Oh. Uh... <laughs> the chicken brothers? Come on. I watch Breaking Bad. You know what I'm talking about. I do now. I'm just very tired. <laughs> do, do, these, do these guys have a sh- have a chance? Uh, are they going to be gone soon, or could they at least get themselves enough to where they could stick around as a the, job or tag team? The fans are going to stop caring, and they're going to end up going on superstars. They're going to be squash meat for the Shield, and then they're going to get future endeavored. It's in the hands of God slash Triple H. Now, the obvious feud of them is, seems like it's going to be the real Americans. Could, could this... You know, possibly change our opinion to for not just them, but maybe even both teams. Could they help make stars out of each other? Because right now, it's it's a time to make a name for yourself. It's always possible. The internet's going to go apeshit when they put him over Antonio Cesaro. That's what's going to happen. 
<laughs> oh, he's right. He's right. And I will be one of them. Ah, oh, oh, he's gonna he's gonna have to do the big swing on the midget. Yes. <laughs> oh, I was going to see that. He's gonna oh, right. Do you reckon he, he can get him by... over the over the top rope? That'd be fucking awesome. He has to grab it by the horns when he spins it around. <laughs> Yes. If he can spin Titus O'Neil 30 times in a row, I want to see him do that to the midget 300 times in a row. I want to see him try it on Kali. Oh, that's time, what we were hoping he, he for. He gave him match. the neutralizer once, so I'm sure he could do it. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I would love to see him swing the midget by the horns 300 times. Shit, it'll be the most entertaining thing that fucking tag team's ever going to do. Like, if he, can do it in, if he can do it in a minute, then 30 times 10... Ten minutes of just him swinging the midget around by the horns. See if he releases him. See how far he can get him up the ramp, and they can measure it every match they have. <laughs> it, it's going to be like the Olympics. It's going to be like the shot put. <laughs> Thirty meters. I'm going to be disappointed if they don't at, cut at least one promo where the midget says, "If you mess with the bull, you get the horns." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they, they they really just need to go all out with this. I mean, it, it seemed like about a year ago we were getting to this point where we were seeing a resurgence of gimmicks, and we're still seeing it continue, but they got to go all the way with it. And I think that's the problem is it seems like they're afraid to go all the way with it. They're just kind of like at this halfway point. I, I think there's potential for this. I, I'm not going to count them out yet. We've only seen them once. Definitely set an awkward tone for the start, though, especially as far as the crowd reaction that we saw. But then again... This is Biloxi. It's not like it's the golden standard of what we're going to see across the rest of the nation. It's not Shelton Benjamin. <laughs> going to add him into the tag team. <laughs> Bring back the world's greatest tag team, goddammit. Bring back Shelton Benjamin's mom. <laughs> Somebody call my mama. There's a feud. Shelton Benjamin's mom against Brutus Clay's mom. <laughs> <laughs> Shelton Benjamin's mom versus the fucking midget. And then Mark Henry comes out with a hand. Oh, what? Antonio Cesaro spinning Shelton Benjamin's mom. <laughs> Her dress would go all up and we'd see everything underneath that. Oh, God. You know that it's been a lackluster rule. Look at the fuck we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you can't deny that, Peyton. <laughs> no, what are you talking about? We, we talked about three big to- four big topics before we got into this. Yeah. <laughs> we, just, we, just, we just had like a 15-minute conversation about Los Metadores. Oh, God. Yeah, we did. <laughs> I feel dirty. <laughs> so um, let, let, let's just quickly touch over everything else that happened tonight. Uh, we had a six-man tag between the Usos, Dolph Ziggler, and The Shield. Pretty decent match. Roman Reigns ends up getting a vicious spear in the end for the pin. Pretty much a filler match, but hey, we got to see these six guys go out there, wrestle a really cool match. Uh, you think someone said match night earlier? I, I could be inclined to agree. We'll go around and get your guys' thoughts about it again, though, Stephen. Um, I don't remember there being a good match on this card besides this one, so yeah, it's got to be match of the night, unless I'm forgetting something really obvious. But yeah, what well, we've had is shit like Kofi versus, no, well, was it Co- no Off Troop versus Curtis Axel, and that was crap. So yeah, this is this is the only good thing that was on the fucking card. So well, well Kofi did fight Fandango, which I thought was decent, but we'll get to that one later. Paul, your thoughts of the Shield tag match? Yeah, match of the night. I'm going to have to agree. Kofi versus Fandango. Hey, at least Fandango didn't walk out. Um, uh, they they did a uh, they did a pretty good job, but yeah, the six man tag. That's best match of the night. Tony, your thoughts about the six man tag? Not bad. I wasn't a, a big fan of Dolph Ziggler taking a pin, but at least he took a wicked spear to lose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the way Roman Reigns gives it and the way Dolph Ziggler just sells, it's the perfect fucking combination. Yeah, that he, looks like that hurts like hell. He sells so well. God, he, I I don't I can't remember the last ten years anybody selling better than Dolph Ziggler does. That's okay. since Shawn Michaels hurt his back. Yeah, as I was I, I'd love to see him sell the stunner. Yes. Oh. <laughs> he flips out of the ring. That's good. Book it. <laughs> who cares Stop. about who cares about Punk versus Austin? We want Ziggler versus Austin. Yeah, just for uh, Austin to beat the piss out of him for half an hour and just watch Ziggler sell. Well, just well, have okay. a gauntlet match where he just takes everybody's finisher. Since, since Dolph Ziggler, we've seen other people who sell really well. Um, Seth Rollins, of course, someone that's been praising the show. Fandango, I think, is another name worth mentioning. But before Dolph Ziggler, that that period from 1998 Shawn Michaels to what, what would you say 2009 Dolph Ziggler, there was really no one selling like that. I would say until his last match uh, versus The Undertaker. 
the the one where he it was the heaven versus hell match where he came down wearing the white suit and the white hat and everything. He still wasn't up bumping like he was in the nineties though. But no, but I think he was still selling his moves ever better since, than anybody in the company. Ever, ever since Sean's back at that casket, he's never been the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. All right, well, I guess we don't have a lot to say about this tag match, so we'll just run down from the beginning of the show here. We had a cold opening, no actual song or video entrance. CM Punk greeted us at the beginning of the show. Uh, He gets interrupted by Brad Maddox, and finally a returning Big E Langston, who just had one of the probably more awkward moments of the night than the Lost Matadores, got no reaction from the crowd. He flubbed his one and only line. (laughs) Had a match with CM Punk, which was very sloppy, I got to say. Ended with CM Punk lifting him up for the GTS. (sighs) Not not a good outing for Big E Langston, I got to say. But um, Tony, why why don't you take over on this one? What did you think about this opening match? Tony? Uh, I can't hear Tony. Okay. Tony Tony said I'm getting transformer so maybe he's cutting out. Steve, why don't you tell me what you thought about the opening match here to CM Punk, Big E, Langston? Match of the year by far. I mean, (laughs) they just went out and had a technical bout. I mean, uh, watching it, it just reminded me of the classic between Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart at WrestleMania. And, yeah, it was fantastic. It was shit. It was just, uh, uh, you know what? It was okay when uh, CM Punk had his comeback and dropped the elbow. And uh, yeah, it was fun. It was fun at the end of the match, but for the most part, it was crap. Paul? Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with Steven. CM Punk made this match interesting, barely. Uh, but I I don't know. I get really uncomfortable every time Big E Langston comes out because I think he has boobs. I'm not gonna lie. I, I'm, I'm upset by his pectoral muscles, cause they're just, oh god, they're horrible to look at. He's just so bulky and so big. I don't even want to look at him. He's a weird individual to look at. He's got such a fucking goofy face for his body build. He's got a goofy <laughs> face. He's got a goofy body and a goofy wearing, haircut. Wearing those wearing those skin tight tights does not help at all. Especially the ones he has where they're cut off at the upper thigh like that. Oh God! Your I'm face just... is goofy. Your boobs are goofy, and your attire is goofy. I mean, I'm not the only one who thinks he has boobs, am I? He has boobs, right? He has moobs, man boobs. That just suggests hey. steroid use. Um, hey, that physique looks a lot better on him than his brother, Small E Langston. <laughs> And I mean, we 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 can see we can see his package, and it doesn't look like he has anything going on down there. <laughs> I we have we can looked. see it. We oh come on, come on! Like as tight as his uniforms are, as tight as his uniforms are, you can see. It doesn't matter if you're looking or not. You can see. And we if got the next weird topic part. at hand is Biggie Langston's package, can we move back to Los Matadores? <laughs> I saw that. Up. Let's move back to Ryback and Paul Heyman's bromance. That would be more appropriate. <laughs> Ryback Mountain. Oh, my goodness. Tony, can we get your thoughts on Biggie Langston's big return tonight? I was disappointed. I really <laughs> wanted Biggie to actually come back as a babyface. He's so much better suited as a babyface. Big so return. I was hoping that he would take enough time off that he could just come back and – Maybe Survivor Series time or so that he could just be thrown into some kind of a feud with somebody else, whether it's for the U.S. title or the IC title or a new tag team or something. Just or hell, even just put him in a feud with Fandango or something like that. I think he's going to work a lot better as a babyface. Right now, losing to CM Punk, it's not doing him many uh, favors. So since we can't just have him return as a babyface, what do we do to make an actual turn? Breast reduction. Uh, that's tough. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I probably... think what he should do is he should just be standing around in the back in his uh, barbecue shirt and <laughs> just keep eating deli meat and like give friendly advice to the baby faces. Uncle Biggie. Yeah, Uncle Biggie. That's, that's... Know, <laughs> there's a simple way to turn him. You have Free MB be annoying in the ring, and then you have Biggie come out and squash him. Yeah, he could probably just get away with. Being in a match with a heel, 
Yeah, that's what and I'm saying. Just, like, you have someone like Free and B, you haven't come out and destroy him, do his whole start his whole five count gimmick. Yeah, mm-hmm. true. Yeah, you know what? Why not? Uh, with the three MB, if you're going to deal with um, three's not enough, I need five. <laughs> Feet small up and be like, got three enough, man, I need five. And then three man band can recruit two new members. It's perfect. Right. Kurt Hawkins could be one of them. Lost sure Matador. Isn't Tyler Rex still working for him? I don't know. Nah. Like, he was fired a while ago. I just can't imagine. Oh, yeah, he did get let go. I forgot about that. Throw Zach Roger in there. Right He's not well. doing much. The 10 man <laughs> band. <laughs> We're a ten man band. We got a kazoo player. <laughs> oh, I just got Edge and Christian flashbacks. Ah, oh, nice. Do, and do you think the, you know me? You think you do, know me? Do the two man pose. Uh, <laughs> so the next match we had Fandango versus Kofi Kingston, which uh, I, you know I can agree maybe the other match was better. I would say this is definitely the solid number two though. I thought this was still a really good outing for both guys. Uh, too bright. Young guys, up and comers. I mean, I guess Kofi Kicks, you can't say as much. He's still got a lot of years left in his career, though, and I don't think we've seen the best of Kofi just yet. Um, Kofi ends up winning with the Trouble in Paradise. We see the Wyatt family make a short appearance after the match. I don't think that ever actually went anywhere, though. But uh, yeah, the Wyatts were on the show. Good for them, I guess. Tony, your, your thoughts about this whole thing went down? I'm still disappointed that the Wyatt family have been so disappointing, I guess I should say. But the match itself, I thought, was pretty decent. I like when Kofi and Fandango have matches together. I think that they gel pretty well. I think they could have a great mid-card level feud someday. Like, one of those ones that just looks back as one of those well-remembered mid-card feuds. Sort of like, you know, two... like an MVP Matt Hardy type deal. They yeah. would be two people that would be fantastic in, like, a scramble match for the IC title together. Mm. Yeah, you have to give one of them the title. You, you well, can't... Yeah. Well, I'm just saying. I'm just saying they're 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 really great together. But if you want to make wrestling this... like 101 with Paul Hibbert, well, well, I'm if just you want say... guys to feud over the title, one of them has to have. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. I mean, it doesn't really matter now. It doesn't really matter that you know they're having. They've had like what two or three matches together now. Yeah, they've had a number of TV matches. They've all been pretty good. They've all been very good. But you gotta have. You gotta have one of them have a title, and they're just they're just not opening it up for that right now. Well, they're not that's doing what I'm saying. With the title, so they freaking may well may as well. But hey, we're talking about the future here, you know, potential maybe uh, next year's WrestleMania mid card level match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Steven, your thoughts about how these two had? Uh, that night? This was a solid match. These guys have got reasonable chemistry together, and I'd love to see them work a few more house shows and gel together a bit more, and then elevate them into a mid-card title feud, because these are definitely guys that can go out there and, well, be the workhorses. What, once once upon a time, the IC title was there for the workhorses, and these are essentially those guys in the company right now, so it'd be awesome for them to have the title. Yeah, whatever uh, happened to the IC title leading to the WWE title? They used to say that all the time. Santino got it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, drop from Umaga to Santino, and there's been plenty of changes like that that's made it other shit. <sighs> Goldust had the IC title a couple of times. Goldust, Goldust was, is legit. Goldust was legit when he came in, and for he was legit for a while. It wasn't until, what do you say? Uh, Artist er, formerly known as Goldust. <laughs> yeah, that's probably the downfall <laughs> for his career, and his fucking feuds with the Blue Meanie is blue. But, but then he came back when he like teamed with Booker T. Yeah, but he was that, never he was never the same again. But that was the best. I'm I did sorry. enjoy that work. His work with Booker T was the best. So I, well, I think this will transfer us really well into the next segment we had, and I, I can't believe we actually we didn't have this in the bigger topics, but we had uh, Triple H and Stephanie in the ring. They invite the Rhodes family out. Triple H makes an offer for Goldust and Cody Rhodes to face tag team champions Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns at Battleground for a chance to earn a job for not just Cody Rhodes, but Goldust as well. Dusty Rhodes accepts on their behalf, but only as long as he can be in his son's corner. And he says something along the lines of, I'll be your Huckleberry all night. Let's not forget that Dusty Rhodes' uh, job is on the line, too. That's true. Okay. Dusty Rhodes' job is on the line as well. They they went into a full acknowledgement of his position as one of the trainers down at their NXT building. Tony, you were about to say something? His job's just going to change. He's going to be the new voice of Huckleberry Hound. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna be your Huckleberry Hound dog. 
<laughs> that line um, just made the whole segment for me. The rest of it was pretty uh, subpar, pretty standard or whatever, but that line was so awkward and odd uh, that I just uh, I actually rewound it. I was just like, he just say that? What the hell? Oh, come uh, on. Dusty Rhodes getting in Triple H's face and then Triple H saying, don't cross the line, old man. That wasn't good enough for you? Come on, that was great. No, it's just that line, though. And, I mean, and the funny thing is how the crowd popped <laughs> after he said it. I don't know if it was just like a polite pop. or he was, what... talking, he was talking about when they put him in polka dot. I'll be your huckleberry all night long. Uh, I, I did like Triple H's like, thing like, we gave him polka dots, and the polka dots didn't work. Can you believe this guy, Steph? Yeah, we could have been polka dots. You, we gave you polka dots, and you still couldn't get over. <laughs> we only give the good guys the polka dots. Come on. Oh yeah, we give we give the guy that we want to be WWE champ the polka dots. That's yeah, no, that's that's believe. We have gotten to that part on the King of Kings or that Kingdom Come or whatever uh, DVD where Triple H went through that polka dot face. Oh my! <laughs> do you, you, you do we even remember when he was? Uh, fighting the Rock for the IC title, and he was the pretty boy. I don't. I don't even know what they called him when he was the blue blood. The, the, yeah, the blue blood. The great. Oh yeah, um, the blue blood. When I when he like, I like that gimmick. Yeah, I like the, the original Hunter Hearst Helmsley gimmick. They yeah, actually went in detail though. about his WCW time, where that character originally came from, the Jean Luc Levesque. Wasn't he yeah, more? Wasn't he, he more French back then? He was specifically French. He was speaking a French accent, and he teamed with William Regal. But he was huh. a pussy. That must have been really cool for him to work with Regal. Did they actually go into a lot how Regal was like his first mentor in WCW and basically took him under his wing and showed him like the ropes of being on the road and working into a big company? Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, I never knew that. And that's probably why Triple H has always like really had Regal's back through all of his troubles with the company and made sure that he was taken care of. Well, he was one of the biggest guys pushing for Regal to have the WWE title during that time as the GM. Mm-hmm. It would have happened if they would have given him polka dots. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's, let's pull it back here to, to what we had here Tony what's your thoughts about uh, getting Cody Rhodes and Goldust in this match with the tag team champions not for the tag titles apparently very glad it's not for the tag titles because that means Cody and Goldust will win as they should the disappointment in it though is there's nothing for Dean Ambrose to do he can stand there and make funny faces he can ruin the match <laughs> No, I'm serious. He can just, you know... We can have a last-minute match announced of him and somebody else. I hate when they though. Who's going to fight for the U.S. title? Dolph Ziggler? Kofi? Miz? It could be Big Show. That's the only person I can see. They're not going to give Big Show that opportunity. Not with the storyline they're going on now. Probably not, but I I really think that they... Oh, yeah, Kofi. There you go. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. I, I'm disappointed in that. I don't like how they're throwing random matches onto the card at the last minute. That's why they so, probably put him over Fandango, so he actually doesn't look totally unlegitimate when he goes in there. I would love to see Cody and Goldust as the tag team champs. I think that would be great. I would have rather them had the three members of the Shield against Cody, Goldust, and Big Show. Ooh, and they could have was... they could have done something where they could have said, "All right, Big Show, you really want to take your steam out on somebody? You got to fight on behalf of Dusty Rhodes, who now they are mad at you for knocking them out, and they don't know if they can trust you, and he's got to prove himself to be you know really worthy." But at the same time, they're kind of like looming this thing over him where it's like, you know, Big Show, what if you lose this match? Maybe we won't be on your case as much anymore. You could throw this for them instead, and they could kind of build a little bit something into that. And then, of course, you had to have Cody and Goldust and Big Show win anyway, but and I would out a little bit more. I would have gone a different route with that. I would have actually put Dusty in the match. You don't actually have to have him wrestle. It can What it does, it adds to the story, but the odds are totally against Cody and Goldust when they've got their old man who's pretty much capable of doing nothing uh, in the balance of keeping their jobs for them, and then you have Big Show come in and cost the shield. I don't know why they haven't had an all-titles-on-the-line match like they had with Kofi and Mickey versus Santino and Beth Phoenix. Like, put all the titles on the line and have a six-man tag team match. And winner take all. Like, that would be great. That would be a very not, good match. Not for this pay-per-view. That would fit Survivor Series. Well, better. no, n- not for this pay-per-view, but I'm saying for the shield. The only way the shield is going to lose the titles is if they lose them all at the same time. I don't think they're going to do that. I think they're going to split them up. 
Well, if they split them up, if they split up the titles, then the Shield's going to have to split up because one of the, like, either the tag team champs are going to think the guy who lost the U.S. championship is weak or the guy who kept the U.S. championship is going to think the guys that lost the tag team championships are weak. They're in a funny position with that because the guy that needs to break away from those two are Roman Reigns. Yeah. And, and he's stuck in a tag team with Seth Rollins, so I don't know how they'd work that. Well, eventually they all lose their titles, and they're not going to break up right away. It could just start the dissension, and then they can slowly crumble, and Roman Reigns is the one who reigns supreme out of it in the end. They could they figure that out easily. But I don't Absolutely. want to see these guys split up for another year. I'm actually no, still there's, high there's, on the shield. There's, there's no rush on it. Um, that's why I actually would have liked to have seen Cody Rhodes and Goldust win those titles. Um, that way they could have had this tag team for a little while, so eventually down the line we could see Goldust turn his back on his brother causing the eventual Rhodes versus Rhodes match we want to see. Um, Corey Krause actually echoed something similar where he hopes to see uh, Cody Rhodes double-cross his brother Goldust at Battleground and become a corporate guy where he's guaranteed a job if he throws the match. Am I the only one that doesn't want to see the two Rhodes brothers fight? I mean, I don't really want to see him right now. I mean, I like the idea of Cody Rhodes being a babyface, and I want him to actually get a big babyface return out of this. Maybe even... uh, yeah, Goldust could be the heel, and he could probably pull that off even better maybe than Cody Rhodes could because we have seen Cody Rhodes and Goldust face off in little capacity when Royal Rumble. Was the heel. Right, yeah, so maybe switching it up and having Goldust as the heel would be the thing that really makes it um, something special, but I really don't want to see those two face each other, especially at WrestleMania. Well, if it was a different pay-per-view, it, it, then maybe a different story. No, that, that's, that's a Royal Rumble match or like an, an off-pay-per-view match. That's not a WrestleMania match. Well, if Goldust is the heel, then he has to get Terry back because Terry was hot, and I would love to see I'm sure him. she's not looking so good these days. <laughs> right? She's all wrinkly and gross. <laughs> You have a way with words sometimes. Oh, I have, I have a. Uh, well, at least she's not taking pictures in hotel rooms with random people for seventy five dollars. Oh, sick burn. At least she's not an escort. China. Yeah. Well, oh, oh, well, apparently China has given up her porno ways to become an English teacher. <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> uh, 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 look it up on Google. I don't know if it's true, but it might be. If it's not, if it's on Wikipedia, it's bullshit. <laughs> I've read her drunken tweets. I don't think I trust her as an English teacher. Uh, okay. All right. So last bit we got to talk about here, I think, is the R-Truth Curtis Axel match. Absolutely fantastic five-star match. It ends with the best possible ending you could script for a match with CM Punk's music hitting, causing distraction on Curtis Axel, allowing R-Truth to get the pinfall. Uh, Such hijinks played. Is this really the last match we're talking about? I, I yeah I, I, oh no we got one more thing to talk about so okay it, all right. okay all right all we got right. one thing to go up from here but yeah, anyone have anything else they want to say about this and. are we sure that our truth was actually saying what's up all that time or did they just pipe that in like they did with Los Matadores it, it was probably a Friday Night Smackdown thing where they just put on a track and go with it but goddamn I have never seen him say what's up that many times he had to because the rest of the match was falling fucking apart. <laughs> you have to give the fans summit to pop for. Yeah, this this was pretty bad. <laughs> this was very awkward, and I feel bad because I think Curtis Axel is a guy who has talent. I think our truth is a guy who has talent too. But Curtis Axel has been having a hard time finding people he has a good chemistry with, and our truth is very hit or miss with people. So this our truth used to be in a WWE Championship match for God's sake. For one yeah. month, he was a passing. Hang player. on, he yeah. and Miz fought the Rock and Cena at Survivor Series. He's been no, in a few. No, he's been no. in a few big programs. No, he legitimately fought John Cena one-on-one for the WWE Championship. Yes, but it was for a passing pay-per-view, and he never made it to that level again. Yes, but I mean, I mean, if you're gonna break a da- if you're gonna break a guy down, don't break him down that hard. I mean, come on. Well, no, I said he's a very talented guy, but he doesn't wrestle well with everybody. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. I know. I I see what you're saying. And his gimmick sucks. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> the crowd likes it. <laughs> but um, all right, that's that's not all we had to talk about. We got one other thing to talk about, and that's the the development with the Big Show tonight. We get an interview with Renee Young, who introduces the Big Show as her guest. He cuts a what I think was an absolutely fantastic promo where he talks about he's getting fed up and he's going to go to Triple H and he's going to knock him out. 
and he gets these really awesome bug eyes, and he clenches his fist so tight. You can see the white on his knuckles. Um, later on, we see Big Show inside the office. A few policemen show up, but Stephanie McMahon interjects saying, no, it's fine. We got this under control. Um, and I forget what exactly she said that uh, they kept Big Show in – from from continuing to be raging, but I know he made some kind of comment about you it. Don't, wife your wife says you don't crazy. measure up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but but what what was it that kept him from freaking out? I guess just because she came in and saved his ass from the cops is probably why he didn't continue. Um, well, the cops a big said, mortgage payment coming up. Oh, big mortgage. That's what it was. The big mortgage payment. And the cops said he was threatening somebody with a gun. Did he? No. no. Yeah. What? They, no. Yeah, no. No. He the, said he threatened a member of. This is in Sankara. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they said he threatened a member of the WWE's uh, staff with a gun. I don't know what the hell you're on about. You've been crazy all night, man. Well, no, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm I think sorry. he I threatened him with a weapon of mass destruction. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bigger deal. They start wars over that shit. I, yeah. I watched the segment. I could be wrong. I could be very wrong. I'm sorry. Yeah, no one's saying anything about there being a gun. The chat's disagreeing with you, so. Okay. Okay. Tough shit. Do a finisher, he just pulls out a fucking it. handgun. Well, yeah, what did what, you guys think about Big Show's performance tonight? I think this is a, a big step up for him. He didn't cry. He actually showed a different emotion. He was angry. And Tony, what's your thoughts? Some coke. Not bad. Um, I was really glad that they had him punch the wall. It looked a little bit fake, but I mean, come on. With everything in WWE, we have to kind of put aside that little cynical part. That, of it. that, like that it was, wall uh, looked a little different than the other walls, didn't it? Yeah, so, you know, you, you put that aside, and I really liked how they had him just punch through the wall, and it, even better that they had him punch through, you know, the Thy Kingdom Come promotional thing. You kind of kill two birds with one stone there. One stone there. Um, I'm, all, I'm all for it. Uh, I really want to see Big Show do something, though, at Battleground that carries into Hell in a Cell. I don't want to see him continue to do this kind of sob story for the next three weeks. So whether they have him cost the match for the Shield, or they have him cost the match for Randy Orton, or hell, maybe he just goes out and starts punching people backstage like when HBK started super kicking Stan, whatever. I just kick Stan! Yeah, uh, whether they do that or whether they actually give him a match or something, they just need him to do something. They need him to actually follow through with it and knock somebody out. That isn't uh, an order from Triple H or Stephanie. But I'm all for it. I mean, why not? You can't really do too much with him right now because you need to save him for the pay-per-view. So they did what they could without just doing a complete repeat of what they've done the past three weeks. Steven, how would you feel about this? I know you're you're often uh, uh, someone who comes down pretty hard in the big show. Did he win you over this week? He didn't win me over, but I didn't dislike it. So. Well, let's just start. <laughs> yeah, I'd be, if I wasn't in such a grumpy mood, I probably would have liked it. But uh, I'm not so fucking... Um, as far as it went, I enjoyed his bug eyes thing, even if it was a little over the top. It's like you had the face like you just snorted a huge line of coke, so it was kind of cool. <laughs> Fucking went in there, blazing. He strangled Brad Maddox, who doesn't get theme music, so it was really funny. Did anyone catch that line? I thought that was really funny at the start of the show. Yeah, I like that. Um, but yeah, as far as this segment goes, it was awesome. To see had uh, Maddox up by the head, strangling him. I can all, I'm very pro-anti-Maddox, so it was all good. Pro-anti-Maddox? Yep. <laughs> Isn't that an oxymoron? Yeah. You're an oxymoron. Yeah, that's what Paul, I expected. Paul, read us out. What did you think about the segment with Big Show? Um, I, I mean, you know, I thought it was good. I thought it was good storytelling. Um, he's going to break soon. And for God's sakes, I hope it's Stephanie. Not because she's a woman, but be sh because she's been causing <clears throat> Big Show uh, the most pain, the most anguish. I mean, uh, it's it's very good storytelling by the whole corporation. Um, Big Show needs to knock somebody out soon. Especially if he's pulling that face. It's epic. Yeah, that whole... That whole face and the whole fist, I mean, for God's sake, knock somebody out. We've been waiting for it, and you've been baiting us for so long. It's got to happen, God damn it. I wouldn't mind it being Vince, so it's got a huge impact. 
Well, at least hit him over the head with a bedpan, for God's sake. Oh, no. Yes. Uh, so we actually did have one more segment, <laughs> but I don't think we're going to go into it. We are a little tight on time right now, but it was Antonio Cesaro versus Santino Morella. I don't think we all have too much to say about it. Santino got the surprise roll-up. We got to see the Cesaro spin. God damn it, why is Santino beating Antonio Cesaro? That's the only thing I think we could all really say about it. Because they, they so love to hear back. The, they had loved to hear the internet wrestling community cry. <laughs> I would love to hear Stephanie McMahon cry after her fucking punch by the big show. Just threaten her with a gun, apparently. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sorry. I thought... <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I'm, I'm serious. I thought I heard the detective, quote-unquote detective, when they came into the office say, uh, I heard you were threatening somebody with a gun. For fuck's sake, this again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm to, Well, I'm... I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought I heard it. All right, guys. Probably. We're, we're, we're going to start wrapping up here. We're going to go around the horn one last time. Give us your overall thoughts about the show and finish it out with your high point, low point. Paul, get us started here. The high point was when I thought Big Show was going to clock somebody in the fucking jaw. The low point, I'm going to say, was fucking Paul Heyman proposing to Ryback. Oh. <laughs> No, I'm sorry. I'm not all in for this whole Billy and Chuck version 2 thing going on. Oh, it's not that bad. Oh, it's not that bad, but from, like, the five minutes they led up to it, it was that bad. It, I'll give like, you it. It was awkward. Paul Heyman was dropping all this language, and I was like, oh, Jesus, what are we in for? It just kept getting more and more awkward. Yeah, okay. until he said Paul Heyman guy. I was like, oh, no. Well, I say well played. Steven, your high point, low point. Um, shit, I'm, I'm struggling to find a high point, guys. Um, uh, <laughs> we'll say the six-man tag. The six-man tag, just because Peyton told me to. <laughs> well, then what's the low point, then? What was the worst of the worst? Uh, shit, I've, there's the last Matador, as this fucking Curtis Axel versus our truth There's... This fucking Paul Heyman wanting a hump right back. I don't know what the fuck to pick. Um, shit. Uh, awesome Piano Man said RBD YouTube. That's a good one. Yeah, we'll go with that one. <laughs> yeah, we didn't even talk about that. The RBD <laughs> segment where he was definitely still high in the interview. <laughs> oh, yes, he was. There's that much low on this card that when none of them's more low than the other that I am pretty much can't pick one. Yeah. Um, Tony, uh, round us out on that. High point, the kendo stick breaking. Ooh, yeah. Somebody in the like crowd that. got a souvenir. Right. Yeah. We Low point, um, I'll bypass the proposal situation and just say Los Barik was not using their theme song. Los Barik. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, to give a shout out to <coughs> Awesome Piano Man who left his high point, low point in the chat room. He said the high point was a fake injury. I'm assuming he once by means by CM Punk. Very good job by CM Punk. I agree with him on that. Um, I'm not going to say it's my high point, but I'll get to mine in a second. Low point, the RVD YouTube skit. I mean, it felt like that thing went on really long. And they did like two or three of these throughout the night where they were showing a YouTube video with the YouTube player box on it. Like, what's the point? Just what show the, the whole fuck? video. You've got the videos, you motherfucker. Yeah, just show the actual video. If you want to play like a, a half of a second little thing in the beginning to show that this is coming from YouTube, all well and good. But you, you don't need to have the whole box around there showing me a picture in a picture. Like, I bought my 16-inch TV. I want to use it. Picture set show. Hey, guys, um, if you don't want to see WWE do that anymore, apparently flag one of their videos and YouTube will <laughs> ape shit on them and remove the whole goddamn thing. <laughs> uh, high point for me, though, I'm going to say is actually the Big Show's promo. Um, knocked it out of the park. Thought it was an awesome job by him. Um, showed some real intensity that we, we haven't seen from him lately because he's been playing the softer side of the giant, but he looked like the devastating giant again. I'm excited to see where he goes and where he focuses his anger. Uh, low point for me, though. <sighs> Goodness. I'm going to say the Divas match. It's the easiest one to go with, but could they have chosen two more odd Divas to put out there for this match? There was no you AJ whatsoever. You just don't want to say Los Matadores. You just don't want to say like Los Matadores. He liked Los yeah. Matadores. I, I, I'm in the middle with them. I'm not, I can't put them as a high, but I can't put them as a low either. Can All we right. talk about the Wyatt family tonight? Who cares? We, we, did we didn't even. They, they, were, they were barely there. I mean, yeah. 
They said we're here and they're done. Yeah, we're here. Okay, <laughs> goodbye. We're still, they should be we're here. It's like we're still here. <laughs> and we're done. All right, all right. Uh, they didn't even attack Kofi Kingston with a steel chair. We got just over two minutes here, so let's do some quick plugs here. Steven, start us off, dude. Uh, unanimous decision of mixed martial arts tomorrow over on Dream Elite at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be talking about some of the upcoming cards, the huge world tour for UFC 168, Anderson Silva versus Chris Weidman, too, and much more. Paul? In three minutes, we're going to have the month of October and October 17th and 24th. I will be DJing. I will keep you guys updated on the locations of my DJ job. Uh, keep listening and keep listening to Mega Powers Radio. They got they do a great job, and I love being on the show all the time. Hey, don't say they; it's we. You're you're hey, part well, of the family, well, Paul. Well, we we. So there we, you go. Oh, oh, now we're getting all French. Tony, take hey, over. Hey, we're gonna be Lance Storm up in here. All right, guys, follow everything under the A Mango Tree situation, including FanboysAnonymous.com. The website's still up, even though the channel is down. Check out my articles on Bleacher Report. I'm going to have one coming up in the next few hours. And go to SmartOutMoment.com for everything wrestling-related that I have, as well as YouTube.com slash SmartOutMoment for Smack Talk, where we're going to run down Battleground later on this week. All right, guys. And uh, as always, we are here every Monday night following Monday Night Raw, so feel free to join us. we got a call-in number. We announce it every time there. So if you're listening to us on the archive, you should be listening to us live following the conclusion of Monday Night Raw every single week at megapowersradio.com. If you choose to listen to us in the archive, though, you can find it at youtube.com slash megapowersradio. Uh, we got great shows going on almost every single night, so you know if you're looking for some podcasting entertainment, be sure to tune in any night to Mega Powers Radio because you'll find something good there. Most important thing to plug, this Sunday, right before Battleground, and we do it before every single WWF pay-per-view. WWF. <laughs> <laughs> I still have been I've been, doing a lot of, I've been doing too much nostalgia stuff lately. It's WWF. That's a true fan. That's a true fan right there. Uh, but we're doing our Battleground pre-show. Starts at 6 p.m. That's an earlier time that we've done before. 6 p.m. start time. We're going to be going over our predictions, talking about the upcoming show. And as usual, you can call in. So that's all for tonight, folks. For Tony Mango, for Paul Hibbert, for Stephen Huego, I'm Mike Payton. Thanks for joining us on the Monday Night Raw show here on Mega Powers Radio. 